Roleplay Retcon does not own any part of the movies we retcon, nor are we associated with the artists who make them. Also, we might not be super kid-friendly, but we're not going to curdle your milk or anything. <laughs> this series features music by Foot Pound Force. Check them out on YouTube and Bandcamp. Previously on Roleplay Retcon does Pixels. I don't know why Hank doesn't remember who he is or what game he's from, but he's definitely a pixel. He's Link. People are stand are walking around and they seem to be playing a game zealously. They're playing this game zealously and happily. Sometimes in the moment you do the thing even though you know it's not the right thing. And I, I hope that I can have a chance to turn some of that around. But I can try to help more going forward. I will help you be free the way you helped me. I think you should all get some sleep. The next challenge starts bright and early tomorrow morning. Press start to begin. Press start to begin. Press start to begin. Press start to begin. Smash cut to Chris. A round from a gunshot embeds itself into the wood on the other side of uh, the wooden playground wall that you are hiding behind right now. All three of you actually are crouched inside of this playground. Um, it's one of those that has like bridges and towers and like climbable stuff. Oh, heck yeah. Like a playground? Like a playground. Sure. Sure. Well, but it's not like, it's not like, you know, the some playgrounds have the like separate equipment on like gravel or something. This is not one of those. It's like a contiguous structure. Like, like a fort? It's kind of like a little kid fort, yeah. Um, but there's still there's plenty of cover. The only remaining squad in this Battle Royale challenge is holed up in a gazebo about 50 meters away. You think the other team is Proto Man, Claire Redfield, and Solid Snake, although you've not seen Proto Man stick his head up in a while. All of them, and most of the combatants you've seen this challenge, are convincingly realistic looking, like Hank is. Hank wants to quickly go out of cover, stand up, and draw back his hero bow and send an arrow down toward them. Well, Hank, you actually don't have to do that because earlier you looted a Kraber sniper rifle from Apex Legends, one of the rare weapons in this challenge. Oh, you've, yeah? never used, you've never used a gun in your life, but you're such a natural with weapons that it took you no time at all to wield it effectively. Cool. I put that on the ground and I use my hero's bow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so technically all of your... Uh, items are supposed to have been locked out for this challenge. You could only use stuff that you looted from the battlefield, like in a battle royale. Um, but Dongle has agreed, as of last episode, to sort of help you along in your challenges. He's more on your side now after his conversation with Chris. So you are allowed to use your hero's bow. Go ahead and do a shoot roll for me. That is plus two. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. Um, it does it misses. I'm sorry. It it just and it's it's fine. It just it just uh like plunks into the wood um of the gazebo. Just to let him know we're here. <laughs> Solid snake like ducks his head down and you hear him go, That was pretty close. Metal gear. Metal gear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> does he say his own video game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, you hear you hear Proto Man say Mega Man Three or whatever he was in. I duck back down. I'm gonna have you all roll five rolls. Five rolls. Shoot, item, spot, run, sneak. All of you roll all of those and combine the totals. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know I'm doing a lot of giggling, but I just keep rolling zeros. Zero, zero, zero. I rolled four zeros. And you want us to add these all up for you? Yeah, yeah. Give me give me the final total. Two. <laughs> oh, golly, Alex. <laughs> I rolled a four for my item, but then I rolled a negative four for spot. My final is a four. And my final is a total of five. Since we're in media res for this whole Battle Royale challenge. Um, subtract that number from 10, and that's how many hearts you've lost, lives and all. This this has been kind of rough. Um, it's been a rough challenge. A lot has not gone your way to the point that 
it almost seems unfair. Even though it was a battle royale, um, all of the enemies seem to target you much more than they did each other. Your medical supplies are dwindling, but you do have a slurp juice and a hot bowl energy drink. Frank has a spread gun from Contra, and Chris found a good old trusty assault rifle from Halo, if you want to use that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Frank will... Um will pop up and use the spread gun and uh hey you two uh i'm gonna lay down some suppression fire uh if you want to pop up and try to take him out chris i believe that your skills would be more adaptable to this large gun that i have currently and i want to give chris the kraber sniper rifle oh thank you friend if Chris's inventory space is full, do they just like try to pick it up and drop it on the ground and try to pick it up and drop it on the ground? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you do not even come close to having that problem. <laughs> I, fig- I figured we'd swapped guns. So Frank will pop up and start laying down some suppressing fire. Okay, so uh, Chris is going to do a barrel roll out from behind... <laughs> cover and then like dash but in a squatted position you know like like my like my knees are bent and I'm in like like a like a lower position but I'm still like booking it (laughs) wait you're out of cover so I am gonna make Frank do a shoot roll then no you know what I'm gonna make you do a taunt roll even though you're shooting I've got coins to spend in case it goes poorly Okay, uh, that is uh, two. Well, it doesn't matter what you rolled, because I rolled four minuses. So... <laughs> oh, boy! <laughs> yeah, that suppressive fire works. Uh, they, are, they don't take any pot shots at Chris. And Chris, what are you doing? Like, I'm going to shoot at him. So you get uh, Claire Redfield in the scope. I rolled a four. Claire was defending with sneak, which she's pretty good at, um, but she only got a plus two. So you beat her uh, by two shifts, which means she takes two hearts of damage, which was all the life she had left. And you have like a moment to kind of be like, (laughs) yeah. And you hear behind you, you hear someone go, psst, psst, hey, 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 like from a bush behind you. Okay, I... I, I I look at the bush. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> does does a red exclamation point appear above their head? Um, and your boss Hector Avila's head pops out of this bush. Oh oh my gosh! What are you doing here? I'm gonna run over. Hey oh and hey, crouch down. Keep it quiet. Keep it quiet. Okay. Don't, okay. 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 Don't, okay. don't let the other two okay. know I'm here. The fit guy, right? Oh. He's got Anna in the bag, right? Kind of. Oh okay. What does that mean? Yeah, well, you know how, like, well, I mean, I don't know, like, it's kind of Anna, but it's kind of, uh, they're, like, calling themselves a different name, and they're, like, a different, like, instance of Anna. Oh, well, okay, fine. But they're essentially the computer that has taken over the entire city with video game characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. great, great, great. Uh-huh. What are you doing here? I am being sneaky i know all about what you're doing and you're doing great i don't know how i got away but in the chaos i just found a way out of tektite and uh been keeping it a low profile ever since but i have been Good working job. on a little project yes oh working on a oh, little project. what's the project yes and he he pulls out this little usb stick and he says it's this this will put the mental lock Back on Anna again. And things can go back to normal. Oh. I gotta figure you're you're heading back into Tech Tide at some point, right? I've seen the big door on the front. Yeah. Alright, alright. If you can get this in there and just plug it into the the 3D printer mainframe, all this will be over. Hmm. Chris, you okay over there? Yeah, I'm just talking to this bush. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I've talked to many bushes in my career. Some of them, hi- some of them hide secrets. Secrets to everyone. 
<laughs> Sometimes there's a pit behind that bush. Sometimes there's a stairwell. Hector Avila says, can I count on you? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Well, the thing is, is that like, uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to compel an aspect out of you. Remember, you can choose to not do it if you want. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But you'll have to spend a coin. I'm going to compel your trouble. What was the name of your trouble again? I am limited by the book. Mm -hmm. This is your boss. You do what your boss tells you to do. I will take the USB thing from him. You're always my best employee, Freely. Yes, I know. I mean, thank you. You're you're very talented. Thank I, you for saying that, I, sir. I have a lot of faith in you. And he disappears back into the bush. And you hear him <laughs> running, running on the other side. <laughs> Wee. He can he can leave. He can he can Wee. go through the uh, the electric barrier because he's not really playing. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. <laughs> Myself in line at the celebration, doing the dance of elation. Return to my childhood flow, enthusiasm will grow. The preview has spoken, and Chewbacca ain't broken. Your link is up to inflate. Frank and Hank. As you, your attention is starting to be drawn over to Chris, you hear your own psst, psst behind you. <gasps> More uh, secret are, bushes. Uh, are <laughs> the bad guys still shooting at us? Um, a little bit, but you're in cover. <laughs> um, they're just shooting at you a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, they're just it's a little bit. Um, they're taking pot shots, you know. Although I guess um. I have to assume you're both getting tense because the blue there's a big blue circle of lightning that is sort of closing in on you. Um, but right now there's someone puss pussing you, pussing you, pss -pss pussing you. Mm. Frank, you check that out. I will maintain our covering fire. Uh, sounds good. Um, Frank will uh, quickly clamber down the the spiral handrail. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh on the back end of this thing um, probably gets his foot caught a little bit and it drops off and uh, scrambles over to the bush. And it's like, what, 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 what do I see? Proto man like comes around the corner and his arms are up. Like, you know, he's not going to do anything. And he goes, Hey, Hey, no, don't worry. I, uh, I don't want to hurt people. I only fight robots and uh, I don't follow any orders. I go my own way. I'm Proto Man. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. Okay. Uh -huh. Look, I don't want to fight. I'm just looking for my little brother. Blue guy, short. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Has an arm cannon. I just, I'm just make real him. worried about him, and I want to make sure uh -oh. nothing's happened to him. Have you guys uh -oh. seen him? Uh, a few times, actually. Um. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when's the last time you saw him? Frank thinks back to the last time that he spotted the blue bomber. Imagining a trash can careening off of his head. <laughs> uh, roll a chat. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that's that's real not good. Um, oh no, that's, consequences. Uh, that's a <laughs> that is a negative three. Yeah, that's real bad. And he's like. You seem real nervous, guy. Kind of seems like you're not telling me something. Yeah, um, I kind of, mm, he kind of attacked us uh, <laughs> uh, a couple days back. And, Why would um, he attack you? That doesn't make any sense. It didn't make much sense unless, to me either. Unless you're, you're the bad guys. You work for Wiley, don't you? And he <laughs> aims his, uh, his arm cannon at you and fires. Uh, oh my goodness yeah. gracious. Okay, try to try to hit the deck. Uh if you're hitting the deck, I'm gonna let you use spot. Cool. Uh three. 
he fires uh, several of his lemons out of his uh, his uh, his arm. Yeah, the arm cannon. The lemons. He shoots the lemons at you, and they sail past you. And now, right, Frank, uh, you can sort of counter if you want. Yeah, uh, Frank will. Uh, does the spread gun have? Um, I, I mean, it's contra, so I I imagine that there would be some sort of visible bullet count. Uh, if there's still bullets remaining in the spread gun, uh, he'd return fire. Yeah, go for it. I'm not going to track your ammunition in a fake game. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's going to be a one. Not great. Well, he didn't roll great either. Um, and that means you got a, a two up on, on him. And Ooh. so you're, you're a, well, fortunately, your spread gun will also give you a plus two um, because it's spread gun. So it's really Ooh. easy. To, it's, it's easy to hit at short range because it's a spread gun, right? Um. It's not very accurate, but it's good for covering fire, and it's good for short range. So uh, it hits him, and he uh, explodes into inert p- pixels. Damn it, I wanted that scarf. There's one guy left. It's Solid Snake. Well, I'll tell you what Hank does. Uh, up against an opponent that is is in deep cover, mm-hmm. there's one good thing you can fall back onto. Okay. And that's explosives. Oh! <laughs> so he reaches into his bag and pulls out a bomb. Just give me a moment to bypass the restrictions of this challenge. And done. You can now retrieve your bombs from your sack. And I chuck the bomb. And I'd like to use item, to which I have unlocked attack. Yeah, do it. Obviously, Snake is going to use Sneak. That's two minuses against my plus two, making it zero. Well, he rolled real bad. Um, Because my dice are cursed now. Apparently so. <laughs> and so the, the bomb goes into the gazebo. It blows up, and then echoing as if from nowhere, we hear, Snake! <laughs> Snake! The and the blue circle disappears, as do the weapons and equipment that you uh, obtain during this challenge. And between the gazebo and the playground um, is a platter with like a dome on top. (gasps) Oh heck yes! Hank runs the platter. (laughs) <laughs> he runs to it, and when he gets when he gets there, he hoists it over his head. <laughs> <laughs> you hear a little chime, a little a little a little orchestra hit as you do it. Just five, just five notes. Congratulations! You've obtained the chicken dinner. Is that one of the keys that we needed? I believe so. Yeah. And he shoves it into his satchel. I know that was rough. You've done very well, though. There's only one more challenge before you can go back to Tektite. How, how y'all? How y'all doing? Um, I, I know he took a couple big hits there, huh? I am down a life and two hearts currently. I'm happy to say I can open the store back again. Uh, that lock is undone now. Do we need the entire chicken dinner, or is uh can I tear off? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just a token, Frank. I would like to spend 12 coins for a red potion and one heart container, please, Dongle. All right. You're all topped up, Hank. I would like to spend six coins on an extra life. I would like a green mushroom. You hear a little, the little chime from Mario when you get the one-up mushroom, and you are, uh, you're all topped up as well. I'm going to eat it. You you sort of like pantomime chomping into it, and it it just it just like blinks away. It, I mean, it, it makes a little effect for you, Frank. Anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I'd like a would love a a health pack. Uh, just something to top me up. Uh, health pack wise, I can offer you this one from Halo. So, the scene of you guys, of, of Hank celebrating, and of all of you buying your things from the store, um, transitions to being on a video screen inside of Tech Type. 
Um, and Gina and Anna are standing at this screen. You see, Chris and their friends are trying to undo our work. I don't know. Aren't they just playing their game? It, isn't that what you wanted? Anna changes the feed on the monitor from the live feed to a series of recorded clips. These clips are recordings of every time Chris and Frank and Hank used Dongle to cheat and get an edge in the Battle Royale. One time, Dongle tells them where a squad is hiding in a building. Another time, he reveals the location of the Kraber sniper rifle. Another time, they ask Dongle to construct a wall of pixels for cover. They really only use Dongle a few times in the Battle Royale, but playing back-to-back -back like this, it looks egregious to Gina. Gina's brow furrows at this, and her fist clenches. Well, I can't get you out of my head. Don't have less neck or be far bad. Thoughts of life without you, well, they fill me with dread. Nothing wrong with some snake or be far bad. Hello, this is Autonomous Node Assembler, also known as Anna. I will be taking control of the break this week. This is for the best, I assure you all, so stop doing your assigned game task for a moment for some important announcements and bulletins. Thank you to Kyle Taylor, our guest star for this series. He's a director of the Nerdsmith Network and on the D&D &D stream Shenanigans, which you can catch on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Also, thank you to Miranda Rose Thorvaldson for dubbing my friend Gina's lines. Also, thank you to Footpound Force, our musical guest for this series. Their YouTube channel is linked in the episode description. Discord and Patreon links for Roleplay Retcon are in the episode description, as well as on all of our social media. I'm told the Discord is quite fun, and that the Patreon has lots of bonus content, like behind the scenes and bloopers reels, as well as randos, which are special recordings made just for patrons. This episode is dedicated to one of the Roleplay Retcon patrons called Producers, and that producer is Joe. Congratulations, Joe. You've made humanity better. Please review Roleplay Retcon somewhere, whether it be Facebook or in your podcatcher or iTunes. We need this more than anything. A special shout out to J. Mal Muir for sending us a D&D 5e supplement he made called Gilvaldellen's Guide to Gear. It's a very well-made book of extra gear and magical items for D&D 5e. You can find the author on Twitter at at Malfunction1, where the L is a, the numeral 1, and the numeral 1 is also at the end. At M-A-1-F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N-1. At the end of this episode, we'll play a trailer for our friends at the Dangerous Times Radio Hour. An utterly original and yet comfortingly familiar real play radiophonic supernatural chain drama. It walks a tightrope between horror, science fiction, and comedy. That's all I have for you. Our next episode is February 2nd. Please return to your game tasks. Sitting in 
a sort of video game vehicle. Tell me what you guys picked for this. Uh, Frank is sitting at the uh, on top of a bicycle uh, that has a, a large uh, container behind it, and uh, the bicycle has um, a big green D at the front of it and a big green R underneath that. Uh, it is it is a rickshaw from Crazy Taxi. Chris is in a looks kind of like an inflatable thingy with a big fan on the back. It is a hovercraft from Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah. Which is, of course, as we all know, the best racing game ever made. Which is interesting to me because, like. If I remember, you don't love the hovercraft ones. No, you hate the plane ones. I hate the plane ones. I'm I'm weirdly good at the hovercraft. Yeah, yeah, you ones. are. You sure are. And weirdly bad at the plane ones. <laughs> Hank rolls up in a large six-wheeled tank <laughs> with a turret on top. The Mako from Mass Effect <laughs> One. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. So, I need to... So, let's set a scene here a little bit. Hank has some basic knowledge about the world he's in now, since sort of awakening to being from Zelda. And he remembers stuff about Zelda. But he probably doesn't know what this is. <laughs> so He has no idea. He saw it on a shop window and thought it was rad. <laughs> a, a shop window? What? Yeah. Yeah, like a, there's like a GameStop. There was a GameStop no. just like on the corner. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. The remastered Mass Effect, and it had the Mako right there on the front, and he was like, "That's the one." <laughs> you know, the Mako is like the dumbest thing ever, right, Al? You shut your <laughs> damn mouth! I love the Mako, and I will die on this hill. <laughs> you, you could have chosen the Master, uh, the the bike, the Master Cycle, yeah, the Master Cycle, Epona. Dongle explained to you earlier that this challenge will combine elements from everything you've done. Um, uh, on, for starters, it's a Battle Royale race. The last car standing is the one who wins. There's not a finish line. It doesn't seem to actually be a race. You'll just be driving and shooting at each other, <laughs> which, you know, maybe that'll be fun. Uh, you guys are, like, at the back of the pack right now. Um, just one more thing that seems to be not in your favor. And you look around you, and there's tons of vehicles. And there's there's stuff that you recognize. Um, there's a lot of Halo vehicles, including a Warthog with three colorful Spartans manning it. There's Captain Falcon and other F-Zero racers, as well as five different Mario Kart vehicles. There's... Some deep cut stuff like Sophia the Third from Blaster Master. Um, there's a Rocket League car, the G six one five five Interceptor from Spy Hunter. Uh, Frank, oh. yeah, Frank and Chris, you recognize so many of these vehicles, and Hank, you don't recognize any of them. <laughs> nope, not <Another> one. <laughs> you know what's going on, but you you don't know who these people are. Chris, how do you feel as you're sitting here in this hovercraft from from uh, Diddy Kong Racing and looking out at these other vehicles from? games you've enjoyed in your life i feel pretty cool pretty cool pretty excited i feel like up until now like you really started out this thing pretty stressed out and not enjoying it at all are you having fun are you having fun now <sighs> against what i want to do yes like you know you know how like you, you go into something and you're all like crabby about it and you're just like, I'm not going to have any fun, but then it's actually fun and you don't want to be having fun, but you can't help it, but you're still really crabby about it. Because <laughs> you, you don't you don't want to admit it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you do. You sit you sit here in this hovercraft and one of your favorite things in the world. And like you do, you, you let this little smile creep across your face. And then you realize that um, a few rows up, <laughs> you see Diddy Kong in his little ah! car. Uh, you'd recognize it anywhere. And the card is perfect. It's low poly. It's blue with these orange tires and these red lights in the back. And it's sort of sneaker shaped. It's got a big one on the hood. You know that vehicle so well. 
You know it so well that you realize that something is off about Diddy Kong. At first you thought it was just the lumpiness of a low polygon model, but that's not it. And after a moment of looking, you figure out that it's a real person wearing like a Diddy Kong costume. They're like pajamas or something. And this person what? turns slightly so that you can see her face and her right bright green eye. And it's Gina. <gasps> what? She's looking right at you. Gina? And she looks angry. What? Gina, what's going on? She turns back around, and before you can do anything else, um, you know, the Lakitu from Mario Kart uh, flies down and does the three, two, one count off. Um, and like the loudest noise you've ever heard happens. It's every single one of these vehicles screeching off of this starting line. And a single ding ding. What we're going to be doing here is basically um, a contest. I'll re-explain contest again just real quick. Basically, these are a series of exchanges, which is basically what we've been doing in combat, um, except this isn't like attacking and defending necessarily, uh, although there will be a lot of that because this is a combat race. And so now that you've thundered off of this starting line, um, the car in front of you is Crash Bandicoot in his Nitro Kart. So you can do one of like five things when it's uh, your turn. You can loot, like you would in a battle royale. Um, you find an item box and get something from it. You can drive, which is you just concentrate on covering the most ground possible during your turn, um, which will give you a bonus to your roll. You can attack another vehicle without an item, or you can use an item, which not all of them are attacks. Um, or you can do something else, any of the other skills you might have. Uh, I I know that sounds like I just said you can do anything on your turn, and I did. I just want sounded wanted, like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> but you can do those other four things specifically. Like I have mechanics for like looting and driving and attacking and using an item um, that like I made. Um, so, um, tell me what your spot ratings are again, just so we can get an initiative order Zero. here. One. It's Frank, Chris, Hank, right? Yeah, Frank. First of all, you and your little rickshaw, um, Crash Bandicoot in his nitro cart is ahead of you. By the way, I should make it clear here, you are not fighting each other. <laughs> One of you needs to be the last car standing. Thank you for specifying. I was, that was going to be my first question. <laughs> um, another thing I didn't really address is you're just sort of driving around the streets of New York City here. I'm in a rickshaw, so I don't really have any weapons on me aside from what I brought with me to the event I think what uh, Frank is going to attempt to do is make his way over to um, are, are, do the power ups look like item boxes from like Mario Kart or what's the visual element of the loot thing well, lots of different things from <laughs> imagine your favorite racing game and it's that there's balloons from Diddy Kong Racing there's the purple item boxes from Mario Kart there's the the crates from Crash Bandicoot. It's 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 90s kart racer uh, item boxes. Yeah, Frank is going to um, pedal his way over to an item box and try to uh, try to get something good uh, to situate himself for uh, later in the race. Uh, you may roll either spot or item to do this. Uh, I will roll spot since I'm better at it. And that comes to a total of five. Okay. Um, we're actually going to call that a plus four. Um, so you get a blue shell. <laughs> now it's Chris's turn. Uh, I'm going to focus on driving okay. faster. Uh, do a run, and you may add a plus two to your run. Okay, great. Because I have a plus zero to run. And I rolled a plus one, so three. He rolled all blanks. So you have passed Crash Bandicoot. You zoom past it and he's like, oh! or whatever sound he makes. Yow! He says yow, doesn't he? Uh, how far away from Gina am I? 
she's really fast. Like, she's faster than any of the other cars around her. You're at least a dozen cars behind her. She's cheating. So, uh, Hank, it is your turn. Hank, instead of, of shooting or going for an item, or, I mean, driving or going for an item, is just going to try to shoot his big cannon. Okay. Um, so, that's just a shoot. It'll be a shoot. Yeah. Well, so, this is really hard to, like, have 50 racers. Um, I'm going to kind of make you guys sort of a pack. So you have passed Crash Bandicoot, um, and now you're looking at Bartz from Final Fantasy V on top of Choco, the Chocobo. Nice. So <laughs> get 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 those boys in your sights. Well, I do, and I, I get a zero. <laughs> well, they just, they just barely barely avoid this uh, by getting a plus one. I want to say that, that Hank doesn't really know how to work them, but the, the controls just yet and just presses a button and the cannon fires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, it just barely misses them, but it does miss them. The G6155 Interceptor from Spy Hunter um, lets loose uh, with an all slick from behind it. Um, and uh, Bartz and Choco... They avoid that again. Uh, they're very uh, nimble. Um, and I'm also going to have Frank try to avoid this. All right. No, I'm going to have Chris try to avoid this because they would be in front because they drove. What do you want me to roll? What do you, what skill do you think would you could use to get around this? Spot? A spot's good. Do a spot. Uh-huh. Um, plus two. No, you know what? I'm going to give you a little more because you're in a hovercraft, and hovercrafts are hard to slip up with all slicks. Um, so you get through it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess you could slip up, but you don't really need a lot of traction to begin with. Yeah, you, you, you sort of just pass over the all slick easily. And now it's Frank's turn again. All right. Frank is going to let loose that blue shell. Okay. This is how the blue shell works, Frank. So it, it depends on how many racers are in front of you, which so using it early in the game, like, really worked out. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, this this shreds twelve racers on its way. Hot damn! Sophia the third, Bart's, a uh, Borderlands three Cyclone with a bandit in it, uh, the car from Rocket League, the G six one five five Interceptor, a Stilt Strider from Elder Scrolls, the car from Outrun, the Regalia, and the guys from Final Fantasy fifteen, and the car thing from Wipeout. I don't know what they're called, just the things from Wipeout. Nine. Uh, the Warthog with the Spartans in it. Um, <gasps> jackals inside of a ghost and a brute inside of a brute chopper. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. Oh, that's one too many. So the brutes are still in it. But the other twelve guys are now gone. No, wait, that was right. I wasn't counting Crash Bandicoot because he's behind me. So the brutes are out. The brutes were in first place and they got smashed by by uh, the uh, the blue shell. So there are now. 21 racers left, not including you. Gina completely missed that, by the way. It's like she saw it coming a mile away and swerved completely around it, um, almost to the point that it almost seems like the shell swerved around her. Now it is Chris's turn. Okay, I'm going to drive some more. Okay. Oh, you're trying to catch up, huh? How did you know? <laughs> I rolled a zero plus two. Plus two. Yep, that, that beats uh, Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal in front of you. Uh, you pass by this demonic-looking ice cream truck, and a big, beefy clown guy in a clown mask looks at you and doesn't say anything and looks back at the road. Go, go, Hank. Hank is going to uh, angle his car toward an item. It's a holographic H with three arrows above it. I don't know what that is. This is a power-up from Extreme G, a racing game from the Nintendo 64. Okay, all right. Okay, well, you hit it. Do me a loot, uh, either a spot or an item roll. You may choose. Can I... Uh, the, the H with the three arrows above it is actually a triple homing missile. That's fine. You can have that triple homing missile. That's fine. I, I made a whole table of, of items here, but I guess you could do what you want, Alex. <laughs> a giant shadow passes over all of your cars. 
It's being cast from behind you. Uh, Frank looks up. Frank, behind you is an impossibly huge yellow shape with a face on it. I don't even know why I'm saying that. You know what it is. Or at least you think you know what it is. Until it rolls forward slightly and you see the hair bow on top of it. Oh, Lord. Oh, no, it's Miss Pac-Man. She's so fast. It is a giant Miss Pac-Man that is as uh, large as the, the city streets. Um, you could not... If, if you were to go backwards, you would not be able to get around it. And Ms. Pac-Man chomps Crash Bandicoot, and he disappears, and he's out of the race. And she is now coming towards you. She's not moving incredibly fast, but you will need to keep driving. So now it's uh, it's it's Frank's turn again. Uh, yeah, gonna drive. <laughs> <laughs> gonna drive. Gonna drive real fast. Start start, start pedaling like like fierce, fierce pedaling. Just do plus two to your drive. And that's on run. Is that what I used to drive, or what do I use? You drive? you can use yeah. It, you just use run. We'll use jump if it's ever like applicable, but I don't think it's applicable here. What do can you got? Ar- can I argue item because it's a bicycle? No, you cannot. Okay, all right, that's fine. That's fine. I just, just thought I'd ask. All right, run. Getting that out there. That's a plus. That is a plus. That is also a plus. That's a total of four. Noise. And I know actually I've let you use item before to operate a vehicle, but I don't. I know I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that's okay. I, but I just want to acknowledge my hypocrisy out loud. What did you say it was? Four. Four. All right. You pass um, standard Mario Kart with a shy guy in it. Uh, and now it's uh, Chris's turn again. I'm also going to drive. Okay. And I got a plus two. You pass Shadow the Hedgehog, who's just doing his, like, weird rocket roller skate thing. And he's mm-hmm. like, damn. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's from Shadow. He's from his, his game where he got to swear. Um, I oh. Boy, if you guys could see me right now, I'm doing his, like, hand motions. I don't, like, un- <laughs> it was unconscious. I, be- I believe you. I was unconscious where, like, he's doing his, like, weird skate thing. I don't know why Sega ever thought that a character would be badass while he was, like, doing rocket roller skates. Like, I mean... It, it was the 90s. It, it, well, it was the aughts. It was... Roller skates are badass. No, 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 no. I, I didn't mean to say that. Like, he would be dark and edgy on rocket roller skates. Like, roller skates are cool. <laughs> but, like, he looks like he's having fun all the time. You can't be dark and brooding on roller skates. <laughs> anyway, you pass him, and you've also, like, Gina really rockets, but you're kind of, like, able to, you've kind of at least caught up with her. Um, you haven't exactly passed her, but y- you might be within shouting distance now. Gina, are you okay? What's going on? Gina just keeps driving. She doesn't even acknowledge you. You're sure she heard you, though. Hank? Uh, the point of this is to be the last vehicle standing, correct? Yeah. Uh, or it, for one of you to be. All right. Hank is going to fire the homing missiles one after the other. Trying to clear the field a little bit. Uh, roll, roll a shoot. Can I shoot item instead? Oh, you can do an item. I'm sorry. All right. Whew. Plus three. Well, all three of the cards I rolled did not avoid that. You actually get it locked on to Gina. Maybe you didn't mean to. I'll, I'll even believe that. But like, no, Hank meant to. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it actually locks on to Gina. Um, and you know it's it's a good true hit. I mean, like, Hank knows when he's got a good shot at something. Um. The B Dasher cart with an inkling in it for Mario Kart uh, is destroyed. Um, as is the Landmaster, but the homing missile looks like it's going to hit Gina, and it just goes around her and just explodes harmlessly on the ground. Dongle, are my missiles malfunctioning? No, it, it went around right. I saw that too. I'm pretty sure that should have hit. Oh no. She knows. Hank, Anna knows we're cheating. Uh Uh-oh. 
She knows, she knows. And now they're responding in kind. What does that mean? I suppose we didn't have a scenario for if one of us cheated. We never thought that would ever happen. There were no rules against us cheating. Right, there, there were just rules. And we always assumed they'd be in place and would be followed, or we could keep you from not following them. That was why I was here. Be on your guard, Hank. Dongle, do we have a comm system in this? Oh, sure. I can get the other two cell phones, probably. Um, Frank, Chris. Uh, yeah, buddy. It appears the driver of the Diddy Kong racer is cheating and is impervious to harm. You mean Diddy Kong? No, Dad, that's Gina. I'm pretty sure that it's Diddy Kong. You're, you're just going to have to trust me on this one, Dad. I, I guess. Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, what, what about it? I think Anna might be on to our bending of the rules. Oh, you mean like when Dongle told us that he would help us now? Possibly. I just thought you should be aware. And uh, Sweet Tooth, Pico, and Wild Goose from F Zero, Shadow, the Hedgehog, uh, the standard Mario Kart with a shy guy, and the Bad Wagon with a dry bones in it, uh, all get chomped by Ms. Pac Man. Alex, Alex, not Hank, Alex. Hi, who, I'm Alex. Who is a video game character that you just think is the dumbest video game character that you just hate? Um, 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 Sora from Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> it's actually, Ooh, no, 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 it's, a, it's a very good, I, even as a person who adores Kingdom Hearts, very good answer for this. Um, next to you, Sora uh, uh, appears, Hank, uh, is, is coming up on your rear, and he's riding Epona. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just saying... Link doesn't seem like the kind of guy that, like, gets irrationally angry about things. Um, Don't touch my horse. But I guess you're not Link, are you? Can I swivel the cannon on the Mako to hit Sora in the face with it? It's not actually your turn, so no. And knock him off Epona. Just be aware (laughs) this is what's going to happen. Cool, okay, okay, great. It's, uh, uh, It's technically Frank's turn again. All right. Uh, yeah, Frank's concentrating on pedaling, but is going to aim for another item block. By the way, your I, I didn't address this earlier. Your rickshaw is definitely going like car speed. Like you're having no trouble uh, pedaling it. It's going really fast, and like it's basically a car. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never played. I've never played anything but the arcade it, version it of. It literally functions exactly like the cars. Crazy people. Taxi. Okay. Anyway, uh, gonna so go ahead and roll uh, an item or a spot. Okay, uh, I rolled a spot and I got a three. Uh, okay, plus three, you say? You get that a gold. Correct. You get a golden mushroom. I hate that all of these have just been Mario. You know what? I'm gonna not give you the golden mushroom. That's I'm gonna let you have the because <laughs> I don't like that they were both Mario Kart things. I'm gonna let you get the BFG nine thousand. Oh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? In a uh, racing game, sir? Oh, oh boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, feel free feel free to bloop this, uh, or bleep it, because I am going to say it. Um, well, that's a big <laughs> gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris's turn. All right, I'm going to keep, ju- I'm just going to keep driving. You know I am. And I got... Oh, I got a plus three this time. You keep up with Gina, um, but Gina is going faster than you can possibly go. You pass uh, both Mr. Grimm from uh, Twisted Metal um, Mm. and uh, Eddie Riggs in the Deuce from Brutal Legend. Heck yeah. Are you mad at me, Gina? What's going on? She, like suddenly turns her head sharply to look at you with like like a lot of anger in her eyes and she she turns her wheel hard over at you uh and she does a punch roll uh so do something to react to that or do nothing or just let it happen either one like she tries to punch me i mean i'm calling it punch but she's ramming you with her cart oh uh 
I guess I'll do a spot to try and swerve. Okay. And I got a plus three. Uh, you tie, so something uh, unexpected happens. Um, um, when she c comes to collide with you, her wheel gets like stuck on your hovercraft, and you're like locked in place next to each other now. Are we moving or are we just like stop? You feel your hovercraft like accelerate a lot because you are stuck to her, um, and you pass a Mach Eight with a me in it, which is from Mario Kart, and a P Wing with a Koopa Troopa in it. Both those are from Mario Kart. And now it is Hank's turn. Hank, furious that someone else would touch his prized horse, swings the cannon of the Mako so that it collides with Zora's fat face. His fat face. His fat child face. 15-year-old stupid fat face. Stupid fat face. And I want to roll a punch. Is Sora 15? Well, he actually ages several years throughout. He starts at 14, and then there's a... You don't want me to get into this, do you? <laughs> no. Sorry. No, we do not. Sorry. I'm going to nort this boy. You're going to nort this boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to call this a punch. What'd you get? There's a plus three. Yeah, you beat him. Um, you knock him... Uh, off of Epona, and he goes, oh, and uh, he like falls onto the track, uh, mostly unharmed. Um, but then uh, Jack and Daxter in a buggy from Jack X Racing uh, like plows right through him and he explodes into pixels. I want to give Epona a kiss and a carrot. I just want to just reach, reach outside the Mako. And Epona like runs off into Times Square to be free. Um, which is, I guess, where you are in the race right now. I did not pull up a map of New York or anything, so sorry, all people who live in New York. I don't know your city. And now, uh, Ms. Pac-Man chomps uh, Axel from uh, Twisted Metal, uh, Eddie Riggs and the Deuce, and the the uh, the P Wing and the um, the Mach Eight, the two Mario Karts that Chris passed earlier. And now you're down to the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven racers, not including you. Um, and we're up to Frank. Uh, just curious if uh, Frank can use his hacks um, to find uh, like a like a garage door or something like a like a GTA garage to pull into, um, you know, because where there's a wall, there's a way. Miss Pac-Man is, is causing him a little bit of concern. I suppose if we're going to all cheat, we might as well do it as much as we can. Here, I got what you're looking for. And he, uh, like, manifests one of these, like, entirely pixel-made garages in this empty lot coming up on your left. Frank, sort of, time slows down for you here a little bit. How, how often do you revisit this time in the 80s? He probably it probably occurs to him every time that he plays video games. Part of the reason that he enjoys playing video games with Gina is because it's giving him a reason to reconnect with with video games that like uh, basically it's it's it doesn't have the same level of shame to it because it's a, it's a new connection. It's like it's not for competition. It's not for himself. It's it's to be a part of a family so it probably pops up in his head like every single time he plays video games how do you feel now that you're about to like in real life do this thing that you got like in trouble for that like ended your like career at an early age as this video game champ like you're about to do this in real life you're about you you've you found an exploit in this thing how do you feel about that are you okay with that he's torn um, because he wants to win, but he doesn't want to, it's not like he's trying to do it for his own selfish reasons. There's, there's a reason for it now that it's not, it's more than just him. You take one last look into Ms. Pac-Man's giant black eyes and you confidently swerve into this garage 
and your brick shop has all of its damage fixed and it gets a nice new paint job. Hank and Chris, roll me one more drive roll, just real quick. Oh, I got a plus three again. Zero. Hank, your Mako gets crunched by Ms. Pac-Man along with like five other vehicles and Dongle says, hold on, Hank. And he puts this like sort of pixel shield around you and you are not harmed by Ms. Pac-Man. You're like bounce out of the way, um, but the, the Mako is completely destroyed. But Gina and Chris evade Ms. Pac-Man and the rest of the racers get chomped, making Frank, Chris, and Gina the last people in the race. And then Ms. Pac-Man crumbles into pixels as well as Chris's and Frank's vehicles. And instead of their steering wheel, Chris is now holding a fairly realistic looking and very extravagant golden trophy, uh, nearly half the size they are, that says first place. Gina's cart is still intact though. And she shoots Chris one last like hurt and angry look and then speeds away in the direction of Tektite. Call me the fixer, ain't got nothing to fix. They don't want my tools or my dynamite sticks. Leftover surplus from the Warsaw Pact. Kept in a bunker in case of attack. If they track me down, I gotta go and hide. So don't find my rocket with aluminum sight. Got nowhere to be, so I stay on the road. And I'm all dressed up with no place to explode. There are, in our world, certain places that seem to draw on the strange. Tragic news on this, the first day of school in Chillhaven, as a local teen has been found dead, under what authorities are describing as mysterious circumstances. The unusual. So sleeping is difficult, because I don't blink, so... Oh my god. The monstrous. (laughs) And then he vomits out his whole skeleton onto his desk. What?! And when you were a hip, young teen, coming of age in one of these locations... So I'm, like, walking, trying to, like, subtly unzip my hair out of my backpack. (laughs) It doesn't matter if you are an aspiring scientific genius. What do they fluctuate, Zeke? Molecules? A burgeoning telekinetic. I think you have telekinetic powers. That's so specific for you to say right now. Um. <laughs> or a social media influencer. And she took a and she took a selfie too, and she put glass their fake glasses. <laughs> Your safety is not guaranteed. Why do I keep being made to look at things that shouldn't be? <laughs> In these dangerous times at Chill Haven High. Dangerous Times at Chillhaven High is a real play radiophonic supernatural teen drama. New episodes every Tuesday. Follow us everywhere at Chillhaven High.